Have you ever wondered why this happens? Why sometimes when you try to pour water out of a glass, it dribbles down the side? In this video, we aim to explain why this makes complete physical sense and how jugs, bottles and other containers are engineered to combat this effect. The dribble comes down to a simple force balance. As we know, the force accelerating the water towards the earth is its weight. Now, if this were the only force acting on it, it would simply fall straight down. If the fluid flows down the container's surface, there must be another force at play here. Although we consider fluids such as water to be free-flowing, there are interactions between the water molecules and between the water and the glass, which become significant when pouring. The adhesive force between the water and the glass is, in part, what causes the water to stick to surfaces. It's a mutual attraction between the water and the glass. As you might expect, the adhesive force is different for different material-liquid combinations. For example, although water might stick well to a ceramic, such as um, this mug, it doesn't stick as well to something like wax-coated paper cups. On the contrary, you may have noticed that drinks with a high proportion of alcohol don't have such strong adhesive forces. Another force we need to consider is pressure. Now, atmospheric pressure always acts on the water. But the actual static pressure of the fluid as it leaves the container can change. If the water coming out of the glass flows without any disturbances, we can use the Bernoulli equation, which is just a statement of the conservation of energy under certain conditions. We consider the potential, kinetic, and static pressure energies in a flow, and at two points in the same flow, the sum of these energies must be equal. As the water goes over the edge of the glass, the area of the flow decreases. But we need the same mass of water flowing through any point as mass is conserved. This means that the speed of the water has increased. Over a small change in height, the increase in velocity of the water leaving the glass leads to a decrease in the static pressure of the flow. Given that before we started pouring, the water was in equilibrium with the atmosphere, and once we start pouring, the static pressure of the flow decreases, there has to be a resultant force on the water from the atmosphere. Taking all these forces into account, we can now see what is causing the water to dribble. When you pour the water at a small angle, the effects of air pressure and adhesive forces are significant enough to cause the water to flow down the side of the glass instead of where you want it to go. However, when you pour the water at a greater angle, the effects of gravity and the momentum of the water leaving the glass completely outweigh the adhesive and Bernoulli effects, hence the water does not dribble. As different fluids have different densities and different viscosities, the balance of forces can work out very differently. For example, if you had a superfluid, like supercooled helium-3 or helium-4, which have zero viscosity, they would fly out of the container with no problem. Have you ever noticed that jugs and beakers have these weird lips on them? Or that teapots have spouts? Even wine bottles have these interesting geometries along their rims. This is all to avoid the dribbling effect. Like most natural processes, falling liquids take the path that requires the least energy. By modifying the shape of the outlet, we can change which path that is. By adding a spout, the water has to flow upwards against the force of gravity if it wants to dribble. This forces it to fall normally. Then again, it's easier to drink from a flat-edged glass than from a spout. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.